That metal shell was shot in my hotel room. The part of Don will be played by Beatrice from Guest Services. Hello and welcome to another episode of That Metal Show from Los Angeles, California. I'm Eddie Trunk and once again I'm here with my co-host Don Jameson and Jim Florentine tonight. You got it. Wall to wall maiden. That's right. Yeah. Finally, we've got a member of the band here joining us, Adrian Smith, for the entire hour. And we're going to talk to Adrian about all things Maiden, as well as his work and other projects outside of the band. Then we'll find out the whereabouts of former Maiden members in our Whatever Happened To segment. And for tonight's throwdown, we're going to decide which Iron Maiden album was better, Peace of Mind or Number of the Beast. Up the irons. It's that Maiden show when it starts right now. <laughs> Let's get right to it. This is, uh, listen, you've got Adrian Smith as a guest, and you got this guy playing guitar. I could, uh, I mean, I could die right now. This is just crazy. Joining us to play guitar in this show, and he'll be a guest with us later on this season, one of the all time gods, Michael Schenker. Yeah. yeah. Wow. The man and the sound that has influenced so many, including the man who is about to come out here, as a matter right. of fact, is our, our guest in this episode. Michael, an wow. honor to have you with us. Thank you so much. I have a present for you. For me? Wow. Yeah. What? Oh. A guitar. Oh. 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 That? Oh. Yep, for you. Oh, <laughs> oh. oh my. I see a tear. I see a tear. <laughs> I, I, I can't. For once in my life, I'm speechless. <laughs> Finally. <laughs> They've been waiting for a long time for that. Thank my God. Thank you. Um, please my sign God. it for me. Please. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. He just gave you a guitar. Now you go, can you sign it for me? I know. You want me to ship I, it to your house, too? Shut up. <laughs> no, Michael realized what a big fan you were when he came here the other day. And he goes, I got to do something special for Eddie. He's always keeping my music alive and everything else. And that's it's, why he gave it a guitar. Listen, I mean, this is... Uh this is like dream time for me right now. Because That's like winning an Academy Award. This doesn't get better than this because this guy has been... Forget it, I can't talk. Let's just talk. Thank you. Ugh. I almost got all Oprah for a minute, but I'm going to pull it together. Better than your wedding day? <laughs> yes. I didn't answer. Let's go. Uh, let's move on. Thank you, Michael. Um, what are we talking about now? <laughs> Oh, uh, the Van Halen. We got to talk about Van Halen. Um, since we've been on the air last, a lot has happened for Van Halen. New album. Uh, we saw them. Jim and I saw them do a tiny little launch show at a place called Cafe Wa in New York that was a, a private show for about 150, 200 people. And then um, I saw them again at Madison Square Garden a couple months later. So completely two different worlds. But, you know, let's talk about how we're feeling about this album because there was so much of a spotlight about this Van Halen album. Was it going to be good? Was it going to suck? Was it even going to be made? Was it ever yeah. going to come out? Uh, what are your thoughts about the album and what you've seen so far from Van Halen? Well, first, we never thought it was going to come out. Now. We're always hearing different things, but then it, we, you know, we saw them in the club in New York City. They were amazing, seeing them about ten feet away, and they're playing, you know, like three or four new songs from the record, which I love. I'm not, I'm not a, a big fan of that song "Tattoo." It wasn't, I wasn't crazy about it, but the rest of the record rocks, and I, and I love it. I give it a scale, an eight on a scale of one to ten. So no, the album's growing on me slowly. Uh, you know, I actually like "Tattoo." I think it's a good single, and it's got a ripping guitar solo in it. Um, you know, I'm still feeling my way with it. There's about four or five songs I really love, and four or five I'm still like, oh, all right, I'm, I'm not quite feeling it yet, but I'm going to give it time. I, I've never been asked what I thought about an album so much in my life than the Van Halen record. People really want 
you know, to get a vibe for it. Uh, when I first heard Tattoo, I'll be honest, I was blown away at how much I didn't like it. I was like, this is 28 years waiting for a Van Halen record, and this is what I'm getting, this kind of like little ditty that was like this Vegasy sort of thing. I was, I was shocked and so unbelievably disappointed, but I consistently said, wait a minute, let's hear the whole record before we uh, make a judgment. Because I remember when the 1984 album came out and Jump was the first single. Yeah. And I was ready to jump off a ledge when I heard that because, you know, Van Halen, come on. Keyboards. And yeah, and all the keyboards. And I'm like, whoa. So I said, wait, I remembered that. And I'm like, wait, I'm not going to judge the record by this first one song. So glad that I didn't because in my, you like the song. In my opinion, it's by far the worst song on the record. And the other tracks rip, and I'm shocked at how good they are. Uh, listen, there's a lot of discussion about the fact that a lot of them are old demos. Well, Who cares? Yeah, Who cares? Who cares? As Nobody. long as they capture that energy and that fire and that sound. And I'm really surprised. I mean, I, I love the record. There's songs like As Is and all this stuff rip and Honey Baby Sweetie. Yeah. Honey Baby yeah. Sweetie. Oh, great riffs. The best thing about it, Eddie Van Halen, it, we saw the live shows happy, healthy, sober, and playing like a demon again. And that is the best news. All right. Yeah. There we go. All right, so the board is here, and that means it's time for another TMS Top 5. Jennifer, will you please come on out? Hello, Jennifer. Hello, hello. How are you, Jen? Fabulous. How nice are you guys to doing? see you. We're good. good. We're metal. I, I like mean, the Eddie's maiden. doing great. Oh, my I God. Am. Forget about it. I can't even talk about this. Um, <laughs> Sorry. We've got the, the um, Iron Maiden-esque <laughs> metal logo up there. So let's do the top five Maiden albums. Jennifer, please flip the board. Let's see what they are. All right. All right, I'm going to start with my number five, uh, the reunion album of 2000 when Bruce and Adrian came back into the band, Brave New World, the first album where it all started, simply Iron Maiden, Peace of Mind, right there, A or B, which we'll get into later with The Beast for my, uh, my money, yeah. Killers, um, just the most aggressive, great production, just masterwork, and listen, the, the, the band's all-time iconic record, The Number of the Beast. All right, I got number five, Power Slave. I definitely, Brave New World was close with getting in that mix, but I just, it's number six for me. Peace of Mind, First Maiden, Number to Beast, and Killers is actually my favorite uh, Maiden, so. Well, obviously, I'm old school. They're just in order, as you see them. Six would have definitely been, you know, the new album, but those are my top five in that order, so there you go. There's a lot of great Maiden music, a lot of great eras and decades, but those are our picks, and I guess we should start. Well, Killers is across the board for all of us, and... So is there. the first one. So I the think first, they all are, except the first for Power two, Slave. First two albums put up there immediately, and, and we'll figure and out number the order. And Number of the Beast. Killers? Up, yeah, Killers, yeah, two, we three. We all have Number of the Beast. Does it, we'll, we'll shuffle the order, but let's yeah. get them number up there. Number of the Beast. Let's just get them up there. Iron Maiden, and then um, uh, Peace of Mind. Yeah, we got. We share a lot easy. of this. this There's no easier. arguing on this one. Oh, this one sucks. This is I know. Easy. This is a good. Sorry to disappoint everybody. I know. What about Blaze Bailey? I'll tell you, you know what we should, really should have done? We should have taken the first two maidens out with Diano and did the rest with Dickinson. It would have been more interesting, but... You want to yeah. do that now and we could write them in with a crayon or something? No, we'll just edit this short and we'll leave in all the stuff of you creaming over the guitar. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a flying V in his pants right now. <laughs> there we I'm sorry you didn't get a guitar, Don. Oh. How do you know? Oh. How do you know? You want to finish this pick? I'll just take a pick from Michael. Yeah. I'll be happy. All right, guys. I'll be happy. So, yeah. Yeah. Down off your hands, Michael. And just put up uh, I guess either Power Slave or Brave New World. As, uh... Power, Slave! Power Slave. Come on. We have... Such an old school audience. Yeah. My goodness. Now we can fight right. about the order. All right. So now the order. Let's um... make the audience happy here. Uh, number of the Beast, number one, right to the top. Right to the top. Yeah. Killers. 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 Killers.
right. I can't believe we nobody had somewhere in time. I, oh. You could have. I know. Yeah. It's just so hard, man. Seventh son. It's right. so hard. Is that it? All right, that's it. The TMS top five, it was easy. Number five, Power Slave. Number four, where it all started, the number one album, Iron Maiden. Number three, Peace of Mind. Number two, Killers. And the best Maiden album, according to us, is the number of the Beast. That's our final list. All other lists will be stomped to death by Iron Maiden's Eddie. Do you think you can come up with a better list of the top five Maiden albums? If you can, you can post your picks by heading over to thatmetalshow.vh1.com or check out some picks of the past by texting the word METAL to the number 22422. Well, we got to take a break, but coming up, we'll be joined by Adrian Smith. So stick around. We'll be right back with more on Metal Show. Michael, take us out. Gosh, my gosh, my gosh. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. My God. And whoever said I was a lucky bastard is 100% right. Yes. California. We'd like to bring out tonight's guest for 10 seasons now. You guys have asked for a current member of Iron Maiden and he is finally here. Please welcome Iron Maiden guitarist Adrian Smith. They, the fans don't realize that you guys, most of you guys live in England and, you know, you got your own thing going on. Can't make it over here to do our show. It's not like you guys are blowing us off because that's where everyone thought they're just blowing you guys off. Not at all, no. Not at all. Nothing no. personal. You guys are playing 80,000 seats and you're like, all right, I'm not going to fly to L.A. for this. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, I mean, a couple of guys live in, uh, live in, uh, in the States now. I mean, I've got, I live here part time. It's and Nick goes in Florida. Yeah. Yeah. Has a rib restaurant. He does, yeah. Have you been there? It's great, yeah. Good food. We're glad you're here because there's so much to cover um, in the world of Iron Maiden. I guess we should start with what's going on now uh, because at the time we're taping this show, you guys have announced a bunch of American tour dates yep. Um, yep. modeled after the Made in England set. Tell everybody about that. Yeah, well, uh, we, we kind of like to revisit these these periods. We've done it before with, uh, you know, the early days and all that. It's, it's fun to kind of... Uh, to get these songs out again and give them an airing and and, uh, and redo them, you know. So uh, we're going to do probably two thirds of the set is going to be sort of ran out made in England, Seventh Son kind of thing. So should be fun. Yeah, if we like, remember the songs. It'll be it's right. it's most of the Seventh Son <laughs> of a Seventh Son record, right? It's about six or eight or nine songs. Yeah, there, I think so. there's only about uh, uh, eight songs on it, as far as I know. Am I right? <laughs> yeah, eight or nine. Eight or nine. Yeah. Yeah, eight or nine. Yeah, I do. Um, so you will probably play most of them. The way you guys have toured for like the last, I don't know, six, eight years or so uh, is interesting because there is a theme to just about every Iron Maiden tour. If you have a new album out, yeah. you're going to get all of or a lot of that current album and a few other things. Yeah. And then it seems like the next cycle, it's like you're actually working your way through your history. And because Maiden's history has such an incredible amount of music and periods and albums, it's a big challenge a lot of bands with the history like Maiden have, what the hell do you play? How do you get there? Yeah. You have to organize it because if you just randomly went through the whole set of every album, you know, we'd, we, wouldn't get a, we wouldn't get a set list. So if, at least if you have a time period, you can limit yourself and say, right, we're going to do something from this one. Or if you've got a new album out, it's easier because you would just do five or six on that album. Right. So it's easier to make a set. Otherwise, I mean, there's so many songs. I mean, what do you leave out? Yeah. There's certain songs we can't leave out. Everyone knows that. Yeah. You know, Hallowed, you know, Fear of the Dark, we always play those. Right, right. But, and this, um, this set list, do you guys going to do a lot of those songs you haven't played in a long time? Um, yeah, yeah. Does <laughs> <laughs> it make it a challenge a bit? You know, um, it's funny because you get back to, 
you know, we, we, we'll take a few months off and then you, you get back and you think, oh, we're going to be a bit rusty. But, you know, it's like we've been playing together so long, it doesn't really take that long to, you know, get on the first day, usually, it right. pretty much kicks in. Do you find it refreshing? Because Maiden's, uh, you know, you guys are a band that continues to make consistent new music and great music. But is it, like, refreshing sometimes to go back and go, oh, man, I haven't heard these songs in such yeah. a long time? Yeah, a couple of things we dug out on, on, the, last, uh, on the last thing, and it, was, it actually sounded really good. It sounded fresh, and it was, you know, a lot of fun to play. And it's rediscovering them, maybe playing them slightly different. You know, I like to try and put little different things in them, you know. Uh, but you, on the other end, you can't, if people know the songs very well, it's hard to deviate too much from them. We's not, we don't do a lot of kind of changing them too much, you know. This is, uh, you guys have done a, a document of almost every tour you've done with a DVD and a live record. And this is the most recent one uh, called En Vivo. And I've watched this uh, and it is unbelievable. I was telling you off camera that I've watched and we all have every Iron Maiden DVD and there's a lot of them. This one may be my favorite because I love the way it's shot. The energy from that crowd is unbelievable. The really remarkable thing, and I tell people all the time who don't have a concept in America, I don't think of just how incredibly huge Iron Maiden is around the world in places you'd never believe. And there's a documentary about you guys refitting that plane and taking it all over. That's remarkable. Yeah. They literally took a 757, chopped half out of the, out of the back out so that you could put the gear in. It right. had to be weighed a certain way. You got Bruce up there piloting yeah, the yeah. plane. Yeah. <laughs> were, were you nervous they might have took the wrong part out? And you know, I don't know if we want to get up in this thing. <laughs> Well, um, I'm sure, you know, it was all done so professionally, I mean, you know. Well, how about the first time you, that you flew with Bruce, be honest, were you terrified? Well, I've been up in, with a, in a small plane with him, so, you know, I thought, well, it's just a bit of a bigger plane, you should be all right. You know, he's, I mean, he's quite, anything he does, he'll do it, you know, he gets right into it and he does it yeah, really yeah. well, so. And he does it for a living. It's not like he does it as a hobby. Then I would be worried, you know. Right. Well, Bruce, um, is the, Bruce is the real deal. I went to I, see these yeah. guys in Long Island once, <laughs> and after the show, I'm backstage, and I was hanging out, and I said something to Bruce. I just mentioned airplane, and yeah. he started pulling out schematics. <laughs> I mean, he had blueprints on the wall, and he's just like, whoa, he's way into it. So, don't you ever say to Bruce, like, after a two-and-a-half-hour show, don't you just want to relax, really? Well, you want, yeah. You want all this pressure? And I mean, I've seen him getting out and checking out flight plans, I mean, before a gig. I mean, like, literally just before a gig, you know, looking at flight plans. It's like, you know, we've got to go on stage in a minute, you know. But <laughs> he can switch on and off, you know, it's amazing, really. There, there's one other thing I want to mention about this DVD um, in the in the uh, documentary that's really uh, pretty, pretty powerful, and that is you guys were literally circling above Japan about to, within 10 minutes of landing as that horrible, horrible tragedy took place there with the tsunami and the earthquake and everything. What was that experience like? What were you hearing in the air from the ground? Well, we were, we were in the dark, really. I mean, uh, Bruce did come on the intercom. We were just coming in to, to land at Narita, and uh, he came over and said, uh, you know, it's been, a, it's been a... We don't know what's going on quite, but we, we're going to land here, but um, we've got to be diverted to N uh, Nagoya. And we still didn't know what was going on. And we, we went straight, we turned around and went straight to Nagoya. We sat on the tarmac for two hours in Nagoya. We couldn't get off the plane. And we were trying to get information. And of course, people were trying to call on their mobiles, but all the phone lines were down. So we were trying to find out what was going on. But it was, uh, we knew something terrible had happened, you know. Uh, but say, so communications were down, so we were kind of in the dark. You know, we just were glad we, we didn't land a few minutes earlier. Yeah, you know? yeah, wow. it's it's really amazing. That's one of the many things covered on the uh, documentary, as well as the incredible concert film right. there as well. So much more to talk to uh, Adrian about, including a side project that he has with Iron Maiden that we're going to touch on. So don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of that metal show. Michael Shanker, please play us into break. <laughs>
things hard rock and heavy metal. All right, Adrian, now I know that uh, unfortunately we're not broadcast in the UK, so maybe you don't see what we do here to some of our guests, but oh. we have the TMS vault <laughs> and we're gonna go back in time a little bit and take a look at some uh, vintage Iron Maiden footage. Check Let's it out. Let's go somewhere in time. I think that was a young Borat with Bruce. Yeah. Yes, about <laughs> exactly. Well, you know, all that mania, that's exactly what it's like when we walk into the studio here. Yeah, yeah, I saw that, I saw that yeah. <laughs> There's also something funny about that, too, where Bruce said, uh, you can't play heavy metal with synthesizers, yeah. but a few years later, you would introduce uh, some of those sounds yeah, be careful into what you Iron say. Maiden, right? Yeah, be, be careful what you say, be careful what you say, yeah. <laughs> but, but, you know, that's just, listen, that's 1984, that clip, right? And if you watch the new DVD we were just talking about, it's the same reaction still 30 years later of when you guys play these places, right? Well, I think it says more about, um, you know, when I rejoined the band in uh, 2000, uh, yeah, I was amazed at the amount of young fans that the band had still, you know, new people coming through and, you know, obviously still got the older you know, sort of hardcore fans, but, um, yeah, in, in South America, you get uh, young fans and, they, and they're really so excited. I mean, they, they wait at the airports, you get hundreds of people at the airports. In one place, they even um, they went up on a mountain. And they made a sign, "Welcome Iron Maiden." So as we flew into the um, airport, we'd see the sign. They went all the way up there and made. I mean, they're just fanatical. I want to squeeze in some stuff about the early days because I've never heard you talk about it. You coming into the band with Killers, and you know whether or not did you you and Dave gel right away, or did that take some time? Or did Dave, you... Dave and I knew each other when, since we were kids. We were fourteen. He was trying 15. to recruit you into Iron Maiden, even when yeah. during the first record, right? That's right. Yeah. Well, Dave and I grew up together. Dave, uh, Dave was like the local guitar hero, even when he was sixteen, and we. Get, Rock wasn't, uh, it was still very underground and it's a much more mainstream now, in a way. And uh, so, you know, I wanted to get into music, so I, I became Dave's friend and, you know, I learned these. I said I was a singer, I said I'll be in your band, I can sing. You know, I, I wasn't a singer, I just <laughs> wanted to be in his band, you know. And, um, and you know, I actually, uh, we started off that little band together. So, you know, when I joined Maiden, we'd been playing together, for, you know, for probably four or five years on and off and been best friends, you know. And then what about transitioning from Paul Diano to Bruce? Did you did you know that the band was going to make a huge leap with that change? Well, that was, I mean... Did you think, uh, oh, I just got in this band and now there's yeah. singers yeah, already? Yeah, because that's a and, big thing, yeah. obviously. Replacing a singer is massive. Yeah. You know, and Paul was great, you know, you know, and a lot, a lot of fans loved him and a lot of people still do. Uh, but Bruce came in and Bruce had his own thing. It was good that they were different, very vocally very different, yeah. so... Uh, it wasn't like he was trying to do what Paul did. He was doing his own thing. He had a fantastic range, and we, you know, we sort of went off in a bit of a uh, different direction, you know. Yeah. Which is great, and that and that inspired a, a new kind of uh, direction for us as well. I think you know, Bruce and I started writing a lot, and so there's very very few times a band changes a lead singer, yeah, and then makes what is with their first album with that new singer what is considered to be their landmark album. The other one that comes to mind, although this could be debatable, but obviously ACDC with Back in Black mm. coming in, I mean, that is their biggest yeah. album and that was their first album with Brian and mm. in the case with Bruce coming in, mm. but Don makes a great point. Here you are, you finally, Dave finally talks to you into joining Iron Maiden. What's you going on? Yeah. The singer's gone. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, there was, I did sense a little bit of friction when I first joined, but, uh, you know, every band has that, but unfortunately it got, uh, 
to the point where we couldn't. It uh, worked out. Uh, yeah, it worked out, right? <laughs> yeah, it worked out. Adrian's got a new uh, side project yeah, we're going to we'll talk, talk about, about right that, after yeah. the commercial break. But coming up, we're going to have more with Adrian, obviously. And then our very own Eddie gets his big brain around some tough trivia questions when we play another round of Stump the Trunk. But before we go, we're honored to have with us tonight Charlie Manson. Hey, <laughs> he's out. He's out. He's finally out. Hey, Michael, take us out. Run to the hills. <laughs> I can't imagine a world without metal. There's a power in it. There's an energy in it. We like to have it all on the show. It's not stuff that's played on regular radio. The bands that I love to this day are most of the bands that I grew up with as a kid. How could you not like ACDC? How could you not like Black Sabbath? Metalheads know where to find the things that they love, and they found us. It's very much a community feel when you're a metal fan. You find someone else that's a metalhead, you can sit and talk to that person for five hours. It's the greatest music, and I'll love it forever. Los Angeles, California, continuing our discussion with the great Adrian Smith of Iron Maiden joining us uh, for the entire hour. I mean, we've just scratched the surface. We need you to come back like three more times if you can, <laughs> but there's a few things we need to talk about currently. We mentioned that the, you've got the tour, um, you've got the En Vivo, but you've got something that is... Uh, you're doing on the side of Iron Maiden, Primal Rock Rebellion. On the side, yeah. On the That's side. Right. Talk yes. about this a little bit. Uh, Primal Rock Rebellion, that's something I've been working on uh, for the past four or five years, just kind of in between doing stuff with Maiden. Um, I teamed up with a guy called Mikey Goodman, he was in a band called Sixth. They were a breed of the, one of the new metal bands, you know, very heavy, very uh, progressive, and, and Mikey did this thing which I can't really describe, but it had great energy, and I saw him and I thought, well, that's great, you know, I'd love to... I'll have to, to do some writing with him. So we just started writing, we became friends, and um, this is the result, really. I thought it turned out really cool, you know. It's definitely heavier than, uh, a different sound and heavier than Maiden. Yeah, I mean, I think if, if people are waiting to hear Run, Run to the Hills on there, they're not gonna get it. Because <laughs> it's very, like you said, it's very modern. You know, sort of an industrial tinge to it. Tinge, yeah, still, I mean, still guitar solos on it. But still, with so, the melody, right. Yeah, it's, um, it choruses. Some of the verses get a little bit, uh, bit edgy, you know, Mikey's doing his thing. But you know, he, he does. He sings as well. So it's um, it's uh, it's quite interesting. I, you know, the, I can't say there's anything else that out there like it. You know, I've, I've heard. So <laughs> that's you know the best thing I can say. And the other project that we love that uh, that you did was Psycho Motel. Oh, you thanks. did two albums with yeah. them. Yeah. Welcome, to, welcome to the world. It's one of my favorite albums of all thanks, time. Thanks. Yeah, it didn't, I love that uh, album. Thanks. Um, you know, a lot of people didn't uh, really get to hear it. I mean, I didn't really promote that either. You know, I, can't, I, I love the process of. Um, of writing and recording and all that, but you know. You hate this part of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love it, but um, that, it's almost, a, that, that's the easy part of music, you know. Now, if people can find the, the Psycho Motel stuff, I, I highly recommend it. Oh, cool. It. Yeah, great Thanks. stuff, and the playing is Thanks. magnificent. Cheers. So, so going forward with Iron Maiden, um, the, the plan is to just continue this, this cycle as you've been doing it. I mean, I know making new music is very important to the band as well. Yeah. When, when you guys get together to work on new music now, um, is it a group writing thing or does everybody bring in ideas? How does it work? It's more we bring in ideas, I think. Um, I think along the last couple of hours, Bruce, Steve and I have written together, which is kind of a new thing. Uh, Steve is almost kind of... Uh, I mean, he used to bring in three, four, five completed songs. I mean, everything, you know, guitar, melodies, uh, vocals, lyrics, everything. And now he's almost doing more arranging uh, produ production, overseeing kind of stuff. Although we do, like I say, we do sit down and write, uh, Steve, Bruce and I, um, and, and that's reflected in some different stuff. It's a slightly different direction. I've started writing longer stuff for some reason, I don't know. Yeah, you've almost, almost become progressive <laughs> in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe on the next album um, we should, uh, maybe we'll We'll, we'll strip it down and, I don't know, do some short stuff. I don't know. It's difficult to, to uh, 
you know, look into the future but too that's far. But the, that's the great luxury of Iron Maiden. Of you don't have to worry about, will this get on the radio or get played on video? Yeah. You do what yeah. you want. Yeah. You've got the fan base that yeah. supports it and grows, and yeah. it's, it's amazing. It's really yeah. amazing. I mean, there's never been a record company in the studio with us or... You know, uh, it's just the band, you know, no one, no outside influence. We, we're lucky, but, you know, it's, we, we kind of work for that, you know. Yeah, no doubt. Even in the, back in the day, in like the 80s, when all the bands were blowing up with radio and videos, the record companies didn't try to force you to write a single or... They probably did, yeah. Um, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, you know, there's no way. There's when no you're way. playing, you're selling a few million records and you're... Yeah. Filling arenas even and back then. Nobody, jet, yeah. Yeah, yeah, nobody's telling you what to do. Not in those days, isn't it? We had a, we had a bus, but, um, you know, but I, I, I've I, always been more interested. At that time, I was interested in, uh, I mean, I liked, you know, Hendrix, um, Free, and all that. But if you listen to those bands, I mean, Hendrix had some great singles, like Purple A's and, you know, Voodoo Child, condensed his thing into two or three minutes, or, which is a real difficult thing to do. Right. Free had some great singles. Um, you know, so uh, Lizzie, Thin Lizzie, a lot of stuff. Oh, I love Thin Lizzy. Yeah. Sure. And they had some great singles. So you, you can be done, you know. And the stuff we did, like Icarus in, in the 80s, it, was, it wasn't a conscious attempt to, to get radio play. It was just what well, I enjoyed writing, you know. Right, right. Yeah. And Steve was up to that. So we put that in. And that kind of balanced up well with the more proggy stuff we were doing, you know. Right. Well, keep doing what you're doing. It's working, yeah. I would say. <laughs> midway point of the season and I think we've refilled that box of junk at least twice so get your act together if you tank it today we're putting the shanker guitar in the box of junk folks you know what time it is hi what's your name I'm Erin where are you from I'm from La Quinta California what's your question Freddie my question is what two songs on the Number of the Beast album did Adrian Smith write or co-write? Here we go with these writing and co-writing. <laughs> oh, complaining already. Right out of the gate. This is easy. Come on. Come on. The guy's got a million records and songs. Um, He's talking about the one record. I'm, I'm guessing here because I honestly don't know. But I'm going to take some guesses oh, and think Run to the Hills. No? Just because of the big chorus, you know, that's an Adrian type thing. Um, Invaders? No. I think she probably wins now. The numbers of Yeah. <laughs> There's only seven songs left. There's eight songs Let's on the album. Come on out, Jet. It was The Prisoner in 22. 22 at Avenue. Avenue, yes. And The Prisoner. You know, and The Prisoner? The Prisoner's one of my all-time favorite Maiden songs. I should know that. What oh, that's cool. What is this? I Man Go. This is actually a speaker for your iPod. This is really cool. I actually I have it those. hooked up to my iPod. Nice. So I totally enjoy it. Awesome. Thank you. I'm glad I got it wrong for you, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> What's your name? Christy. Where are you from? Stevenson Ranch, California. What's your question, Freddie? My question is, the English band Painted Lady changed their name in 1978 and became a part of the new wave of British heavy metal. What's the name of the band? Thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. He's going to get this one. Yeah. If he doesn't, does this to me. No, I'm always right, though. I can uh, see how that mind's working. Would a member of that band be very close near me? Would, no. Would the your way would off? It, shush. <laughs> Try to help. Really? Am I? Way off. Way off. Think a totally. The band different was direction. Painted Lady. Painted oh. Lady. Oh, 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 watch. This is the noise he makes. <laughs> this is the noise he makes. It's coming. See, oh, it's slowly. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh wait. I, I, oh. Oh. <laughs> I'm just guessing it's going to be, and he's going to get it. No, I'm not. I really don't feel like I'm going to get this one. New wave of British heavy metal. Painted lady. <laughs> they were an English band. You can't help me out. Adrian wasn't in the band. No, all right, no, all right. Adrian wasn't in the band. For real. Some, I've done some things in the past, but not that. No, not that. <laughs> yeah. Painted lady, praying mantis. 
now. What is it? I don't know. So girl uh, school. Girl school. Oh, I didn't know that. <laughs> yeah, but it's me. the only girl band from the Wave of British Heavy Metal. Oh, wait, did she say female band? Huh? She didn't say female band in the she setup. She didn't have, but painted know, lady. But I, what does that mean? Come <laughs> out, come on out, Jen. <laughs> Two and two together. I'm under pressure here. I got Adrian here, Schenker there. Come on. <laughs> Glenn Hughes' his new book. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. Amazing book. Thank you very, very much. Thank you. I thought you'd pull that one out of your ass. No, right? no, no. The lady thing was not helping me. Uh, what's your name? Peter from Glendale, California. What's your question, Freddie? What two Bruce Dickinson albums did Adrian Smith play on and co-wrote a few songs? Chemical Wedding. Yep. Yep. And Accident of Birth. Got it. Wow. <laughs> redeem myself, Adrian. I got to redeem myself. Good King's X shirt. Yeah, Good King's X shirt. And we want to give a shout out to our buddy Jerry Gaskell, For who sure. uh, had a heart attack. And he's oh, he's yeah, on the men's, yeah. yeah. What's your name? I'm Freddy Contreras. And where are you from? Jalisco, Mexico. What's you your doing, question? Buddy? We're on in Mexico, right? Iron Maidens. You see our show in Mexico? Yeah, yes. we're on there, right? Are we in HD in Mexico? Because we're not here. <laughs> you're, in, you're in Televisa, Mexico. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we watch it all the time, so. Thank you. What is uh, the name of Iron Maiden to personal touring airplane? Personal touring what? Airplane. airplane. Oh, um, Ed Force One. Yep. Got it. Thank you. Getting back and coming back. Coming back strong. When, when Bruce talks to you guys, does he say, like, this is your captain speaking? <laughs> yeah. Or does he just start talking? Uh, he's, he, they did not say, this is captain speaking. He, 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 yeah, I mean, he's very, very professional. He sounds like, you know, no, like mess, no messing around. He sounds like a pilot. He doesn't say, scream for me? Yeah. <laughs>now it's time for our pick of the week and it's a great dvd from scorpions uh, actually it's a blu-ray i don't even know if it's available on dvd it's called get your sting and blackout live in 3d yep and as the title suggests it is in 3d um which is obviously an emerging technology uh, we are still not in hd so we're going to just bypass that and go right no, to right 3d yeah. we're going to do that metal show live in vhs yeah, yeah. <laughs> does it come with the glasses so you got to get your own I don't glasses know. Does it? No, no, you know, I don't think you. I don't think the way they did it. it you, you don't, don't need, need the glasses because yeah. you still looks three dimensional. I've watched it, um, and they, there is a documentary on there as well about how they actually accomplished that uh, for for three D. But the, the most important thing about it is it's last year's Scorpions tour. Yeah, you know, the band is sounding as, as great as ever. Some songs from the last new album sure. and. Uh, it smokes, man. I mean, like I said, seriously, I mean, you, you want bands to retire when they can't do it that well anymore, but they're still great. Absolutely. Still Adrian, great. a bunch of gigs with the Scorpions? Yeah. Uh, again, it was in the, in the mid-80s, I think. I think we, uh, we were the middle band uh, for the Scorpions, and uh, they're fantastic. You used to watch them there. Always a lot of energy coming yeah. off that stage with the Scorps. Yeah, yeah really. every night. But they're so consistent as well. Yeah. All right, coming up next, we'll put out an APB on all former Maiden members in our Whatever Happened To segment. Then it's the heavyweight bout you've been waiting for. Which Maiden album is best, Number of the Beast or Peace of Mind? We'll settle that argument in just a few, so don't go anywhere. We'll be right back with more of that metal show. Take us out, Michael. can't imagine a world without metal. There's a power in it. There's an energy in it. We like to have it all on the show. It's not stuff that's played on regular radio. The bands that I love to this day are most of the bands that I grew up with as a kid. How could you not like ACDC? How could you not like Black Sabbath? Metalheads know where to find the things that they love, and they found us. It's very much a community feel when you're a metal fan. You find someone else that's a metalhead, you can sit and talk to that person for five hours. It's the greatest music, and I'll love it forever.
Metal Show, your home of all things hard rock and heavy metal. What do we have for tonight's Whatever Happened to, Jim? Uh, this email comes from Ethan from Los Angeles who writes, Hey, you guys should find out what's going on with the old main guys like Paul Diano, Dennis Stratton, and Clyde Burr. Now, Diano just had recently got into some legal trouble. He was in the slammer for a few months. It's happened a few times. Yeah, a yeah. few times. <laughs> Been banned from a few countries here and there. Yeah, from, but he's back out playing and doing some shows, and I think he's still living over in Brazil. So he's back out playing. And, and we had him on for earlier in the history of this show. He yeah. was on in, in a brief segment with us, if you can go back and find that. Right. And then uh, as far as Dennis and Clive, I don't know, do you know anything that's oh, going on, Adrian? I haven't seen Clive. Uh, we did, uh, the last time I saw Clive, we played Twickenham a couple of years ago, and he... Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. Come to uh, come to the show, and he just uh, he's not in a good good shape. He's in a wheelchair. He's got he's yeah. battling MS. So yeah. all the best to him, really. He's been doing that. He's he's struggled obviously for for a long time with that. And I know yeah. that you guys have done some you know benefit shows and things like that for him as well, right? We've done a couple, yeah. But uh, people are just doing it off their own bat as well. I mean, I get uh, emails quite a lot of time. You know, kind of uh, signing stuff and sending you know made memorabilia to raise money for for Clive. You know, so and. Uh, the guy you replaced in Maiden, Dennis Stratton. Do you, do you know anything Dennis, about him? I haven't seen Dennis around. I mean, I used to see him growing up because we were in the same part, London. He was a little bit older than us, and he get a band called RDB, who were really good, and we used to go and see him. So um, I haven't really seen, seen him since those days. And I bumped into him once, you know, after I after I joined him. It's a bit, obviously, a bit awkward, but... Um, a little awkward, yeah. Right. Yeah, you know, but... Uh, all right, well, if you see him out there, let us know what he's doing, and uh, sure. we'll update it uh, in another season. <laughs> All right, now it's uh, time to see which Maiden album was better. Now, in one corner, we have Bruce Dickinson's debut, The Number of the Beast. In the other, we have The Beast follow-up, and the first with drummer Nico McBrain, Peace of Mind. A one-two punch that set the stage for Maiden's legacy, but only one of these classics will pull off the finishing move in the throwdown. Two minutes on the clock, please. Adrian. Um, number to beast. All right. Edward. So incredibly difficult, but I'm by a hair I'm going with number of the beast. You? Number to beast. Number. <sighs> Are you gonna make it unanimous my so we can just my, debate? My you can honest, say it if you, you might say number to beast. My too. honest pick by a hair. And I hate to go against the classic album, but I, I like Peace of Mind a little better. I really well, there, do. There is a there, I do. there no that that's me not, and that one guy. Yeah, but but that's <laughs> yes, I, I do. The, the, first of all, the opening song is a stronger song. Where Eagles Dare. Is, that's that my true. that's opening my favorite song Maiden true. song. Where Eagles opening Dare. Opening song is better. I, I know it's hard to it's hard to say Peace of Mind because there's Hallowed Be Thy Name and I, there's Run to the Hills and there's the Number of the Beast. But I just there's something Flight of Icarus and uh, To Tame a Land. Oh. For me, for me as a fan though, when Deanna left the band and then Bruce came in, that record was make a break for me and it was just. It was a masterpiece when it came out. That's why I got to go with Number of the Beast. The the no, peace of mind is no slouch. Oh. Believe me, there's not a clunker on there. But yeah. I just got to go with Number of the Beast just to the power of that record. Yeah, and it was a bit of a breakthrough album for us. You know, third album, and you know, Bruce joined, and it sort of went from strength to strength. And you had the track Number of the Beast and Run of the Hills, Hello, which we still play. How would be thy name? Maybe the all-time epic signature Iron Maiden song to true Maiden fans, and it's, it's on number it's of the beast. It's it, so but. it's so hard, but you know Don makes a, a real great point though about the opening tracks. I've often said this about Number of the Beast. What other iconic record have you ever seen where the first song on it, Invaders, is maybe like the the throwaway track? Because you, I don't even know if you've ever played it live. Have you? Well, I, uh, no, I don't think so. No, I can't remember. Well, well, that, That's not saying much. You know. Strange. I don't even know how the heck that happened. You know, it's uh, not. A bad song. It's, it is a strange. Just say one. Dennis Stratton yeah. wrote it, and we'll, you know. <laughs> <laughs> But there's so much amazing stuff on both. Nico coming in brought this whole other side to the drum. I'm arguing against myself as I usually do, but I they're, know, but they're both what, amazing. Let's records. see what the audience thinks. I think we know what it's going to be. Is it uh, Peace of Mind? Yeah. All right, got some love for it. Respectable. Is it, or is it uh, Number of the Beast? Yeah. All right. Revelations. Yep. Well, that's all for our metal show. We'd like to thank Adrian Smith for stopping by. Yeah. to see this episode or any past episodes of TMS, you know what to do. Head over to thatmetalshow.vh1.com and remember you can always follow us on Twitter. For Don Jameson and Jim Florentine, I'm Eddie Trunk and we will see you right here next week on That Metal Show.
Oh, oh wait, I, I, oh. I'll...